So welcome everyone. Uh, this is session two and we are in room six and we're gonna be hearing from Ashley Clark about accelerating learning to address learning gaps with playlists. Uh, Ashley Clark is a transformational coach for Link. Prior to joining the Link team, Ashley was a fifth and sixth grade math teacher in Baltimore City, Maryland. She considers herself a pedagogical problem solving um, cheerleader for educators everywhere, helping teachers shift their focus from lecturer to facilitator of learning and putting students at the heart of the classroom. So welcome, Ashley, and we are here to learn all about addressing learning gap playlists. Awesome. Thanks, Kat. Good morning, everyone. So good to see you first bright and early this morning. Um, first and foremost, thanks for coming and spending your time with me. Um, I have a couple hours ahead of you. I'm on the East Coast. Um, so it's roughly, it's like one, almost 1.40 um, in the afternoon for me. So I, I'm always excited to come and be able to spend my time with you all. So thank you again for having me. Um, my name is Ashley. I am I'm a transformation coach at Link, the Learning Innovation Catalyst, where we do all things blended learning um, and really focusing on creating equitable and personalized classrooms for our kids. Um, so I am super laid back. Feel free to put anything in the chat at any time. Kat's going to be here hanging out with us um, to help answer any questions that we may have. Feel free also to come off mute if you're feeling bold and daring this morning, if you need more coffee grab it. If you need more tea, grab it, water, whatever. Um, but we're going to be super laid back, talk all things playlist. So we're going to jump right in and make sure we get us started here today. All right. So I like to do um, a check-in. I always say that it's, it's equally as important as we always know um, as educators that we are checking in with our kids saying how they're doing that day. It's also equally as important to do that with adults. <laughs> and people rarely actually sit and take the time to really do that. Um, so I always like to start off my sessions with what we call connection before content. Before I do anything, it's always just a wonderful starting point for me. So on a scale of one to four, you can put in the chat or if you want to come off mute and explain if you're very daring. Um, how are you doing this morning? One, maybe you're like, it's too early for me. I haven't had enough coffee. Um, and then all the way to a four where you're like, I could ride a velociraptor right now. How are we doing? Let's see. Pull this up. I'm getting a lot of threes. Three is usually the go-to. Got some twos. Okay. Cat wants to ride a velociraptor this morning. I love it. My twos, hopefully. We can help you feel a little bit better by the end of our session today. I hear you. I know I had to take something for a migraine this morning. Totally understand. Definitely get lots of fluids, stay hydrated. And if you need to be off camera, totally understand that as well. Give your eyes a break. Give your eyes a break. Loving all these threes. Awesome. Very cool. So thank you everyone for indulging me in that. If I had to say, I'm probably, I'm probably between a three and a four. Probably by the end of this afternoon, I'll be ready to, to take on the world with a Velociraptor. So <laughs> we'll, we'll get there, we'll get there. All right. So today's journey, this is um, our focal point and what we're going to spend a lot of time talking about today. Um, I am going to have some resources for you, for you to explore, utilize. I always say sharing is caring. Um, and that goes just beyond, you know, the knowledge realm, right? We love, we love resources as teachers. Um, so today's journey, we're going to be learning all the ways to utilize a playlist. Um, and it's a, one of the blended learning models to meet the needs of all learners, especially as we know, as our students who due to extenuating circumstances, <laughs> COVID, right? Um, those who may need to have a little bit more time and personalization in terms of really helping to address um, some learning gaps, right? And really helping to better prepare them for acceleration and getting caught up. At Link, we have um, <clears throat> something we call the PAC, very lovingly, we call it the PAC. Um, and the PAC stands for um, an overarching theme of really creating personalized learning experiences for everyone in all of our classrooms, 
right? Um, and every single component of the pack makes up things that we can really utilize for that personalization purpose, right? So our first one's gonna be agency. And all of these components are, we're gonna be talking about very briefly and they're gonna be embedded in everything that we do, right? So agency, how are we giving our kids the autonomy to make decisions, be part of the decision-making process, really learn to speak up for themselves as learners, right? Which we know, especially for younger kids, is a little bit difficult, especially if they don't really understand, A, what kind of learner they are, or B, how they fit within a classroom ecosystem. Second one, authenticity. How are we giving our kids relevant learning experiences and access to real audiences? There are a ton of awesome tech tools out there that can do this. Um, namely Flipgrid pops up into, up into my mind um, and really how they've leveraged their, um, what they call it, the discovery library. Anyhow, um, love Flipgrid. We want to give our kids authenticity and give them those authentic learning experiences. That's just one of the ways we can do it, right? Next one's gonna be connectivity. How are we giving our kids the opportunity to collaborate with peers and experts? Um, locally and globally, if you will. Um, how are we giving them the opportunity to maybe work with different grade levels, different classes, students in other schools, right? And then lastly, creativity. How are we giving our kids uh, the opportunity to build skills and to keep on innovating? We don't want it to stop just because the standard, standard and our lesson says, okay, we're good. We mastered this, right? How are we going to take that and give them the opportunity to go to the next level? And so, as I mentioned earlier, all of these tiny little pieces of different things that we can do in our classrooms ultimately are gonna make up the top umbrella piece, what we call personalization. This is gonna be our main focus today. Um, really taking all of these individual pieces and thinking about how we can leverage them and utilize them, i.e. in a playlist, um, to create a personalized classroom to meet the needs of every single student which I know probably is way easier said than done, um, but we're gonna learn some different um, templates that we can use, tools that we can use to better help us feel prepared and help take the stress off of us and put more learning and onus onto our kids, okay? All right. If you think about the way classrooms used to be, and I'm very guilty of this, um, I spent a lot of time in my early teaching career uh, being the sage on the stage. It was me facilitating the lesson. This is how exactly I say it's gonna go. This is what you are going to do. Um, but very much it was me spending majority of the time talking. And I don't know about you guys, but I lost my voice so many times because I talked so much and didn't put that onus and responsibility on my kids to take a better leap of faith, if you will, um, into being leaders academically in that way in the classroom. So if we think about a traditional classroom and the way it's structured and set up, right? Typically, if we think about a lesson flow, we think about I do, right? So that's gonna be us up there at the board. We're doing the examples. Um, we are showing them the new concept that they're gonna be doing. Then we jump to we do. We're all going to try it. We're going to do some think pair shares. We're going to do some collaborative activity, um, work together, right? And then I, uh, you do. We're going to do some independent activities. Really check your level of understanding for this specific standard, skill, what have you. Um, and then we jump into assessment, right? Usually like an exit ticket um, or a pre-assessment, if you will, if you're really wanting to know what your kids already know about that skill and or concept, right? But if we think about the traditional classroom flow, traditional lesson flow, if you will, it's very linear. Um, the, the gradual release of responsibility starts with us, but as studies have shown, like majority of the people who, I can't remember who told me this. I had a teacher once tell me um, that whoever does majority of the talking in a classroom is the one that is learning the most. The one that is learning the most. I'm like, huh, 
That makes so much sense. That could have saved my vocal cords a long time ago, right? So we really want to rethink how we're viewing this traditional classroom structure and how we're really ultimately giving our kids more time to own up to their academic kind of responsibilities um, and take accountability for their learning and really help them discover what kind of learner they are. So let's re-envision classroom instruction. Any questions so far before we jump into something else? Make sure I didn't miss anything in the chat. Awesome. And you all are gonna have um, some, what I call tinker time today to really dive in um, to some resources I have for you and explore. Um, so be excited, it's coming. It's gonna be a good time, okay? So let's look at, oops, there we go. Let's look at some traditional style lesson plan elements, okay? In the chat, what do some typical lesson plan elements look for you, look like for you in your classroom? Or if you wanna come off mute, come off mute too. Don't mind that at all. What do some traditional lesson plan elements look like for you in your classroom? Warm up and closing question, yes. Utilizing standards, absolutely. And having them in a way that your kids actually understand them, because let's, let's be real, the standards aren't written for kids, they're written for adults, so we gotta reword them. Love that. Independent work, activity, okay, groupings, review, procedures and materials, discussions, love the collaborative time, Video clips to introduce concept. Yes, we call it like a spark. Love that. How are we getting our, our learners hooked? How are we getting them engaged? What is the purpose? What is the expected outcome? Absolutely. Modeling. Yes, Sarah. Yes, Kim. Linking to prior learning. Linking to prior learning. And also to add a caveat to that, how are we linking to... Um, other content areas, discussions, conversations. You guys got a lot of good ones. Vocabulary, language objectives. Anything else? These are all awesome. So you all have already named probably majority of all the things that really make a, a traditional like lesson plan right? Where we have a standard, we have an objective. We're going to communicate that standard or objective somehow to our students in a way that's going to make sense to them, utilizing academic language, making sure that they understand the outcome and the goals that they want to, we want them to get to, and ultimately they want to get to, right? Um, and really helping them a better understand how a traditional lesson flow is going to work for them, also keeping them on their toes, keeping them engaged. Let's see, learning tiers, reflection and assessment. Absolutely. So as we're looking of, at these various lesson kind of elements, if you will, really rethinking um, how they're going to realign to state standards, how are they going to be either inquiry-based and or um, direct instruction kind of based, if you will, um, and really help us think, okay, I'm utilizing all of these things. I'm not going to reinvent the wheel here, but we can take all of these various elements and we can put them into a structure that not only A, makes sense, but B, our students are held a lot more accountable for the work that they're doing and they feel better about doing it. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Oop. Oop, oop. So if we look at those components, we turn them into a playlist, right? I like to think of um, like a, a music playlist <laughs> uh, where we're taking all these various elements where considered maybe the songs and we're putting them all together on a playlist. And we have the opportunity to do what? When you're listening to a CD, oh God, a CD, maybe not. Maybe, a, a <laughs> I'm dating myself here. Um, maybe not a CD. Okay, shuffle, thank you, yes. If you're listening to Spotify, I'm a big Spotify person. I love Spotify. Um, but if you don't want to listen to them in the order that's intended, right, you have the opportunity to shuffle. You have the opportunity to kind of scoot around, if you will, to ones that like really pique your interest and you really want to listen to. 
at that time, right? Not all learning happens in a linear fashion. Not all learning happens in a linear fashion, right? Some students really appreciate kind of the, the handholding and or the structure, if you will, and the format of that. But some students who really can handle uh, the, the ability and opportunity to kind of choose where they want to start really thrive in a section where they get to do something like a playlist model, okay? So, if you do not know, and or if you haven't ever really utilized one before, a playlist is a tool that can foster independence, allow for student choice, student agency. That's probably the, the one of the number one goals that we want to foster within a playlist. Um, and it can really help us better differentiate for our students based on needs, right? Very easy to make what I call like a master playlist, being able to make a copy and differentiate it based on like small groups that I'm having, um, based on pre-assessment scores, based on post-assessment scores, even often sometimes when students need to be better prepared for the next concept. It also allows us to better help students accelerate where they're already advanced and to help us work on learning gaps. For me, when I was teaching math, multiplication was still really difficult for my kids. Um, a foundational like grasp and understanding of fractions was very difficult for my kids. And that's something you have to have prior to being able to go into ratios and proportional reasoning. So there was a lot of different ways that we had to kind of be creative. So not only one help them build that, that strong foundation that they so desperately needed, but they also had to be prepared in such a way that they were able to tackle those six great concepts of ratios and proportions. Okay, so we're going to think of a playlist as our roadmap. If you want to think of it as like a song, a music playlist, then go for it. That also totally works too. Um, but it helps us better to communicate um, and help the student advocate uh, how they are as a learner and help them better identify that as well along the way. Here's an example of a playlist um, that you may see um, in the examples coming up. This is from Dr. Catlin Tucker. Um, if you have not heard of her, she is phenomenal. She's one of our advisors and she has written so many books along the lines of just everything blended learning. She's a phenomenal blended learning expert. Um, but this is a way to create a playlist and it's a way to create pathways that you see here on the far, oops, my mouse, the far left side here. And what are some of the things that you're seeing? Um, let me make sure. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit so you guys can see it, okay. What are some things that you are seeing in this playlist example? Throw them in the chat or you can come off mute. What are some things that you're seeing in this playlist example? There's some guiding questions there too. You see those? No, she it. What are some things you're seeing from this example? Okay, it looks like a choice menu, yeah. Playlist, choice boards, very, very, very similar. Okay, specific directions, absolutely, because let's be, let's be real, we know our kids don't read full lengthy directions. <laughs> Short, sweet, simple to the point, you have everything that you need, boom, right there in the directions. Love that. Anything else? Okay, give students some choice in what they read and what they analyze. Yes, Christine, links embedded directly. When I was teaching um, online uh, via Google Meet and Google Classroom a couple of years ago, uh, I always got, Miss Clark, I can't find X, Y, Z. Yes, you can. Everything that you need is right linked in the document right there for you. Ways to access help and support, yes. Absolutely. And I love that you mentioned that, Kelly, because it's not blatantly in the playlist example here, but that is one of the biggest um, components of a playlist is being able to have that one on one kind of like check in time. And it's already built into the playlist. That's what sold me when I first started utilizing this. But yes, absolutely. Everything that you all have already mentioned 
are some of the small kind of wins. Let's see, student accountability, yeah. And that's, that's, the, that's the biggest thing overall, especially for me when I started, first started utilizing those. But everything that you see is not only purposeful, I'm not giving students any kind of extra jargon um, and or extra stuff that they might not necessarily need. Everything is straight to the point. Um, and when I mentioned earlier, our kids don't like to read directions. It's still true. They don't like to read the directions. Um, so keeping them short, sweet, simple to the point, they have everything linked and embedded there. There's choice embedded within the directions like you see here in the second one, choose a famous speech to read and analyze. And then you're gonna complete this Google form. So really having a solid pathway, right? Having icons that kind of denote that pathway and what it's gonna be. Um, and you can select those. I've had teachers use Bitmojis, icons, random things. Um, prefer our visual learners. If they're not reading, they can visually tell, oop, I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna watch a video. Oop, I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna go to Flipgrid and I'm gonna watch some of my classmates' videos. And I'm gonna answer questions things like that. And that way it starts to really help our students see that they have a place and a designation for every single activity that they're doing. And once you see that your students are really good about being able to go through this kind of linear pathway, right? Take the training wheels off. You may have some students that may say, hey, I'm gonna go through and I really have a strong grasp and I have a better understanding of this concept. Can I choose the starting point in, in the playlist? And for me, it was always kind of exciting and a little bit nerve wracking because I was really interested to see where my students were deciding to start first. Um, so it's just an extra kind of uh, little data, little data bit, um, if you will, kind of embedded within that. So it's always good to see. So if you were like me, um, former math teacher, there's really not a whole lot uh, tech tools specifically out there for mathematics. Um, very kind of uh, plain, just kind of there. So we have to get real creative. Um, and I'm sure it's like that with a lot of other content areas as well. Uh, but just being able to take what you're already doing, whether it be utilizing a tool, whether it be utilizing a physical, like hands-on activity, right? You can build that app activity and opportunity. I'm just trying to combine those um, <laughs> and put it into a playlist. So for math, for example, one of the favorite things I ever did um, was have my students explain um, their reasoning and problem solving. Um, whether it be, you know, they're, they're writing it out and they always give me slack for like, oh, we're in math, why are we writing? Mathematicians, we write, okay? Um, whether it be explaining their, their reasoning, their rationale, whether it be um, error analysis, that was another big one that we did, utilizing Flipgrid, uh, being able to have online conversations and discussions about real mathematical issues and problems. And then world language, if you're a world language teacher, um, how are they able to create infographics utilizing Canva, PictoChart, another one of my favorites. And then lastly, another example in the arts, being able to have tinker time with creative digital tools. Um, I had some students that absolutely loved drawing comics. And one of the best things I ever did was when we did a playlist, I embedded some time where they could go onto an app called Edu Creations, and they could draw out a comic um, based on their understanding of a specific standard activity that we were doing um, or a concept and really prepare like this really awesome um, uh, activity for, you know, a rising sixth grader. So it was really cool to see and they were giving me all the information I needed were they understanding the concept, right? But they were also able to still um, be creative and have that creative and innovative kind of outlet, if you will. So playlists are for all. Don't think it's just for, just don't think they're for one. So here's my next question for you. And this is gonna be a Zoom um, annotate question. If you're not familiar with Zoom annotate, 
If you look on the top of your Zoom screen, you should see something like, you are viewing such and such a Zoom screen. You should have a drop down menu there and you should see something that's annotates like a little pencil. Um, you can play stamps, you can um, scribble with a little pencil. Go ahead and grab a stamp or a pencil, um, if you will for me, and answer these two questions. Your first one is how much choice do your students currently have in their learning? How much choice do your students currently have in their learning? Love and all the stamps. Hardly any, some. Got a couple between some and all the time. Yes, love it. Your second one, how much does their work allow them to really represent who they are? Got one already between some and all of their work. If you go to um, the top of your Zoom screen, you should see a drop down menu. It says something like, you are viewing, you're probably viewing Kat's screen. Um, and or it, it'll say Kat's name or my name. <laughs> one of the two, one of the two of us. And you should see a drop down menu um, that says annotate. And if you click that, you should be able to select a stamp. I think there's like stars, check marks. X's and hearts. Love it. Or you can scribble. You can scribble. Totally fine. Loving all the stars. Good. Okay. Good. So by really taking the time, you're already doing all the things that you should be doing, right? With putting your students into the work that they're doing and making sure that they're culturally and like physically represented. I love that. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything. Absolutely, you can answer here. You can answer in the chat, go for it. Go for it. Perfect. I'm gonna take a screenshot of this. If you all don't mind, I'm not gonna get anyone's faces in it, I promise. Perfect, okay, awesome. Thank you for taking the time to do that. Um, it really helps to better understand um, what we're doing that's working, what we're doing that's maybe need a little bit of revamp, right? And by taking and understanding this, we're able to say, hmm, okay, maybe I'm willing to take a risk and try something new, which hopefully you are, um, and find one of the uh, playlist templates that I have for you all today and really take the time to explore them. Got it. Thank you for sharing that. They have voice and choice. Love it. Good. Even with that limited mobility, right? I love that you're still taking the time to make sure that they still feel heard and seen, right? Not only physically, um, but to be able to, to make those choices in their academics as well. I love that. Awesome. Okay. Let me clear. Perfect. It always gets away from me. Awesome. Thanks, team. So as we are looking through differentiation and really taking the time to um, do what we're already doing anyway, right? Um, whether it be creating small groups, whether it be being able to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with our kids, um, station rotation, right? You can take those different things that you're already doing and embed them through a playlist and still guarantee that you can have those one-on-one -on -one conversations with your kids because um, I don't know if you all are like me. It was very, very difficult for me to do that um, because I felt that I had to control every single aspect of my classroom early on in the first couple of years. Um, so really relinquishing that control and having my students take more accountability, um, not only for their, their academics, but how they are as a learner, really helped to free up my time to be able to have um, those one-on-one -on -one conversations and be able to do more check-ins with my kids. And that was super important for me. So be able to check in with small group of students, one-on-one -on -one conference time with teacher. Someone mentioned, I can't remember who it was earlier, brought up the fact that you know where to go when you need help, right? And you're not having 15 million kids coming up to you all at one time um, because they need help, right? When you're maybe working with another student, you're trying to get something done. There's designated work and or check and or help time embedded directly into that playlist. So students would already know what time they would come to me and or I would call them up to our table 
and we would be able to have those conversations and they weren't just willy-nilly just doing it whenever okay and then that teacher check-in time I can't reiterate it enough. It's so important, um, especially when it comes to data conversations, um, checking in on pre and post assessment tests, um, whether it be formative assessments, right, really helps our kids not only one, catch up on the work that they haven't done, but two, really helps them to create and implement goals and goal setting, um, which I saw for my older kids was a little bit more difficult for them to do because prior to that there was no accountability little to no accountability in their learning um so by being able to do that we're able to, to have those check-in times i'm getting the data that i need and they're better understanding of how they are as a learner and they're better to start advocating for themselves which is huge especially for my middle school i don't know if i have any middle school teachers out there but y'all know how middle schoolers are Okay, it's like a whole different world <laughs> in middle school. So if we can get them to understand, understand and to better advocate for themselves, like that is a huge win, um, huge win right there, period. Okay, so here's some other ways that we can um, differentiate through playlists. When we are taking those um, lessons and activities that we already have, we're not reinventing the wheel, right? You all probably have some videos that you've already done in previous years, probably in the past couple, two years, right? Um, you have some awesome like lesson videos that you've already created. You have some amazing tools that you've already created, um, some awesome lessons, right? Take all of those and you can embed them directly into your playlist. So. We're able to tailor students, tailor to students' needs um, by utilizing activities from previous tracks, if you're a track-based school um, and or previous classes, um, previous assessment performance. A big one for me was previous year's um, state testing, especially at the beginning of the year, being able to look back and see that data um, and really just jump from jump for it from the beginning. Um, and or personal goals. Personal goals for me always worked wonders with my older kids, uh, my fifth and my sixth graders, just because we know there's a there's a big leap between fifth and sixth grade. So being able to have them not only take accountability for those personal personal goals, but be able to track them as well. Huge win. Right. And then we also have some different strategies that we can utilize when grouping our kids. Now, if you are a lover of station rotations, which kudos to you. Um, I'm slightly jealous. Um, you can take all of those methods of grouping that you're utilizing in station rotation model and still utilize it in a playlist. Playlists do not have to be done individually. Um, they can be done in groups. That was one of my favorite things to do was group my kids based on need and have them collaborate and work together through a playlist, right? So a couple different things to think of in mind when you're thinking of different ways of grouping your kids, um, grouping dynamic, how well they're working together, are they spending majority of the time like talking and not getting any work done, or are they talking and collaborating and problem solving, right? Um, interest in learning mode, what are they curious about, how do they want to learn? One of my favorite things that I ever did um, was a... <clears throat> um oh, oh my gosh the theory is multiple intelligences having kids understand if they are a visual learner a kinesthetic learner are they hands-on do they have to physically like move and do the things right um so eye-opening skill progress where are students in a skill sequence different skill needs whether it be um are you working on a specific writing example what are the skills that are needed to like formulate and create a paragraph, right? Are we looking at grammar structure and things like that? And then independence readiness, which students like to work on their own. I had some students that really flourish in terms of uh, wanting to work independently, and that was totally fine with me. But I also always encourage them, hey, you know, I appreciate that you're an independent worker, um, but we also need to make sure we're embedding times where they can really learn how to function and get along in a group. Yes, I love it. 
theory of multiple intelligences is a, is a game changer. It was for me at least. And my, my kids were always very, very curious to see like what their results were. <laughs> um, some different tools that we can utilize to help um, bring differentiation to the next level. Flipgrid, we know that's a time and true, like that one's always gonna be there. I don't know how it's still free, knock on wood right now. I don't know how Flipgrid is still free, um, but it really helps to allow not only our students connect with each other, right? Um, but they can also connect to the outside world in terms of really cool, I've seen in the past, um, national parks have done it, aquariums, um, we'll get on there and do lessons. So it's, it's phenomenal. Um, Edpuzzle lets you flip instruction. This was always my go-to um, in terms of, hey, I'm going to front load all of the instruction and information you need to know. And then you're going to go through, we're going to watch it, we're going to do some checks for um, understanding, and then we're going to be able to move on, right? Lastly, Pear Deck helps um, students pace themselves. We're giving them agency, right, um, in terms of when and how they want to access said information. Nearpod probably does the same exact thing. I haven't gotten on Nearpod in a, in a minute. Um, Pear Deck is, is very near and dear to my heart. So that's one of the examples there. Um, yes, there are a ton of different um, uh, tools out there that can do very, very similar things. It's all in how we can kind of get creative and make for the tool. I always say, have the tool work for you. You do not work for the tool. If it's not working, we're not using it. But that's an excellent point. And then lastly, throughout the playlist, we know that each student is gonna complete a formative assessment and or check for understanding um, and make sure that they, they definitely know, like I'm gonna have check-in one-on-one time um, with my teacher as well. Yeah, absolutely. I'm curious to see like what, what programs do you or and or tools do you use? I'm curious. Add them in the chat if you get a second. So lastly, um, when we're looking at playlists and really helping students create the responsibility for like implementing and doing all these things, these action items, right? Um, students are given the opportunity to have access to the unit or lesson plan, including access to all of the materials. The lesson plan itself is the playlist. That is the lesson plan. <laughs> I'm not talking, please don't send, <laughs> please don't send your students your actual lesson plan. The, the, the playlist is your, your lesson plan, promise. Um, they don't need to be seeing and or worrying about all that and neither do you. Um, but they, they have access to everything that they're gonna need, right? They're not gonna have Ms. Clark, I don't know where to find X, Y, Z. Yes, you do, it's linked in the playlist, okay? Students can work through all of the lessons and assignments at their own pace. Um, this was huge for my kids, especially during um, remote and hybrid learning. But the kids who didn't have adequate access to internet, um, kids who didn't maybe have an adult at home to help them, right, with their work. Um, I mean, I would even have kids getting on the bus um, at 6 30 7 o'clock in the morning and they had to take several buses just to, to get to school um, but lord knows they had their phone so they were able to get in and uh, review complete work get make sure it was submitted right they still had the opp opportunity to do that because I had opened up the the playlist to be that way and lastly increased time with students in small groups we know that that small group check-in one-on-one check-in um, but really able to better communicate to our students individually or in groups, how are they doing? How are they functioning as a learner? What questions do they have? What goals do they want to reach, right? Let's see in the chat. Read 180, okay. Oh, read 180. I remember that one. I don't think I ever taught using read 180 because I was never an ELA teacher, but I do have several <laughs> of my friends that were ELA teachers and read 180 was a fun one. So I definitely hear you on that one. So now we're at our fun tinker time. Um, this is going to be a time for you to explore. 
Oops, let me make sure I get all of that. I'm going to drop a chat or a link in the chat. Yeah. Wow. And that's hard. That's very hard. I'm going to drop a chat link. Let me stop sharing for a second so I can grab it for you. This document is going to have, there we go. I'll go back to sharing so I can show you what it actually looks like. This document is going to have some examples um, and it's a document I created. So if you have any feedback, would love um, some feedback so I can be iterative and make this resource better um, for educators. But this is a playlist within a playlist. We're getting very meta here, okay? Hi, welcome to the playlist. You're not gonna listen to me talk. Don't, don't listen to me talk right now. So you have in here, um, different playlists that you can explore. Okay. We know that one size does not fit all. So definitely find a playlist that works for you. If it doesn't, we will find something that does. Okay. You have in here, you have a video that kind of explains the resource, um, for, for pretty much all of these different playlist examples. And then if we hit the home button, you also have some um, examples in here and what they look like, right? Um, we have a choice board for uh, the high school level or that was utilized at the high school level. You have a playlist that is kind of like a hyperdoc for elementary level. And then you have a Google Slides playlist for kind of like elementary through high, okay? And then... If you are stuck, if you're like, hmm, I still need a little bit more information on how playlists function, um, how I can better organize a playlist, I put some resources in there for you so you can definitely take a look um, at those as well, okay? So I'm gonna give you seven minutes to explore. I'm gonna put my timer here. That's, that's my calculator, not my timer. I'm gonna give you seven minutes to explore. I'm still gonna be right here. Ask any questions that you may have um, while you're exploring the resource or about playlists in general. We'll come back after the seven minutes and then we will wrap up our time. Okay? So seven minutes starts now. This is your time to explore. I'll play some, some light music in the background, let's see.
In this example, All right. Welcome back. If that was too short of a time, totally understand. Just no one understand that resource is not going anywhere. Um, so start it, have it, add it to your favorites. Um, you now have that link. You can keep it for as how long as you like. Um, so as we round out our time for today, um, as you were tinkering, looking around, what came up for you? What are you wondering and or what did you notice when you were tinkering? You can come off mute, put it in the chat, whichever. Jennifer, you were so engaged. 
Love that. What were you engaged on or in? <laughs> the sharks and then the elephant adaptations and so forth. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. The, the person that made that made a fantastic example. Yeah. See you guys hand raised. Go for it. I'm really curious how I would really use this at my camp with my kids. Um, the main thing that I stated before was what they really need is, first of all, they come from a, a big lack of structure. Mm -hmm. So even sometimes, I know it sounds ridiculous and they're all in high school, just to get them down the stairs and quiet is like a feat and a task. To get them engaged and code switching is something else. Like there's so many multitude of things that we have to do as teachers where I work, it's a whole different animal. But the thing that I would love to see is how my kids can then learn skills and go back into the community and have different choices because their choices obviously are not good ones. So um, for me, it would be great to see something put together like this so I can and other teachers too who work with groups of kids like this uh, for them to have skill sets and how to utilize this even though we do have that and we use something based on um voice town this would be better you know where we can streamline it to those kids in those classrooms so I don't know if that's a project you're willing to yeah absolutely no that's and you bring up such a good point because we know our learners are not all one size fit all, right? A lot of our kids are going through a lot of different things, and especially in your circumstance with working in the environment that you work in and with the children that you work in or work with, um, they deserve something and learning experiences that are one, going to help them prepare and, and be able to have those life skills and job skills, but also where they feel engaged they feel appreciated in their learning environment and they can take they can have the tools to be able to take better control of their learning and their understanding around that right um but yeah i definitely i would love to chat i'm going to marinate on that a little bit more um, i'm going to send you an email so that please. you can respond whenever you get yeah. a minute and um, i'll give you my phone number my extension so you can call me and we don't have to awesome yeah absolutely time. no I, i'd love to chat um and see and get a, a little bit understanding of maybe what like a typical day looks like for you, um, okay. things that you're you're working on. Because my mind's going like three different ways right now, and I could, uh, I think we could very easily come up with something that can be both benefit you and also benefit um, your your kids as well. Absolutely. Perfect. Thank you. Absolutely. Let's see, Sasha in the chat. How do you implement this at the beginning of the year? Behavioral challenges and IEPs. Would love to do something like this. Okay. Yeah. So also in the case of no technology, absolutely. So the good thing with this, um, Sasha, is that you can utilize this in a couple different ways where it's also equally as important that it's not fully like reliant upon technology. Um, it's, it's super important that we are mixing up like healthily, like exposing our kids to tech while also making sure that they're still able to do like um, writing activities, um, all the other stuff. So keep that in mind. Send me um, an email, Sasha, and I will drop my email address here in the chat as well because I have some ideas around utilizing that um, at the beginning of the year that we can definitely, oops, that we can definitely talk about, okay? So as we round out our time today, we got like 30 seconds with you guys. It always goes by so fast. Um, shoot me an email if you're curious. Would love to help answer any lingering questions that you may have. Um, avoid overwhelming yourself in the beginning. Don't feel like you have to turn an entire unit into a playlist, right? Start with a small lesson um, and build it up from there. Um, add complexity, online and offline activities. Super important, okay? But it's also super important that we understand that we need to plan in such a way where we can put the owner, ownership and majority of learning on our students and have them take the wheel. All right. Thank you so much for coming to um, hang out with me 
this early morning for you all. Um, I greatly appreciate it. Please feel free to shoot me an email at any time. Um, would love to chat and see what kind of things are going on. And if you have playlists, I'd love to see them. All right. Thank you so much. Thank I you, hope you Ashley. all have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you, you, Ashley. Thank you, for, thank you for those of you that attended. Remember to do the attendance tracker and the the survey that was in the chat here. And then our next session starts at 1135, the roundtable discussions by uh, area. So room one is for K2 teachers. Room two is for three grades through three through five. Uh, room three is six through eight. Room four is nine through 12. Room five is administrators, coaches, and strategists. And room six right here where we are now is gonna be community members. Thank you.